while having money conversation with your partner may seem daunting it's especially important not only is having the conversation important but having it before you get married is even more important before you join forces as one under the law you and your soon-to-be spouse need to get on the same page this includes discussing how you will manage your finances and creating boundaries for spending debt and more the Hakimi divorce saga has many tentacles, and while we await updates on the rape allegations against him, the repercussions of his wife's attempts to divide all of the footballers' assets equally seem to have backfired. So tonight we're asking, how important is financial transparency in marriage? Please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation, send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-8038-4663. You could also tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag we show how important is it to be financially transparent in marriage i think it's very important i i guess so um just so that there's clarity because we've had cases of you know either separation divorce or in cases in our nigerian case where the man dies and mm -hmm you realize that none of his properties are in your, in, in your name or like there's no <laughs> will. So either his family members come and take, you know, all his assets. So I think it's something to discuss because you also want to, if you have a kid out of the marriage, you also want to be able to plan for them, you know, in case of uncertainty is to say, okay, if we, you know, separate or if one person dies, what's going to happen to our children you know so i think it's, it's a very important topic to to discuss in as much as um i feel like me as if um, well maybe when i acquire more assets uh, I, I think i'll be transparent <laughs> but i don't think i have so much to be transparent about you know um so yeah okay jenny <laughs> <laughs> you know how we've had so many stories about um, people who haven't been transparent. The man dies and you hear that he had quite a large sum of money <laughs> that even his, his own wife didn't know about. And um, there's probably she has to do back and forth with the bank to make sure that the money is released. But then it's like during the time when he was alive, they were just living what a normal, comfortable life. But meanwhile, I mean, life could have been better for them. And the questions I would like to ask is why? Because I, to date, I still don't understand the thought process for why people do things like that. Um, I remember having a conversation with somebody about this topic when it came out, and then someone said um, that what if what if um, people have been hurt in the past by other people, and that's why when they get into marriage, everyone is trying to guard themselves. Your guards are up. So you're working with past trauma. Someone hurt you before. Someone cheated you or scammed you of your money. And you don't want the same thing to happen to you again. So that's why people lie. And you have sometimes women who actually lie about these things as well. Where there are women who have lands. They have houses. They probably have like a house that they've rented to other people. And people are actually legit paying rent into our account. And our husband doesn't know about it. Mm -hmm. And men also do the same thing as well. And then you, you, if you actually check it, it's either probably... When she was growing up, she realized that her dad probably mistreated her mom and he wasn't taking care of her or mm. he had um, kids out of wedlock that she did not even know about. So going through something like that, when you get to your own family, you're like, yeah, affliction was not right the second time. I don't want this to happen to me, so I have to protect myself. If my husband decides to, to cheat or he decides to have a family outside or if he dies, I don't the situation whereby his brothers and sisters and entire family members will come and take all his properties and I'll be left with nothing. So I'd rather just do my thing on the side and he knows nothing about it. You also have the men as well who are doing that. So in situations like that, the question I ask is, what's the point of marriage if you can't fully trust your partner and if you can't be 100% honest? Because to me, this reads as being very dishonest mm -hmm. and I don't buy into that idea of things um i mean growing up i know that we all came up with different um upbringing that's why i said sometimes people's action right now is as a result of what they've been through now the home where i come from 
my father would tell you, my money is your mother's money. So my mom tells you, oh, daddy bought this cloth for you. My father would say, no, it's from both of us. Mm -hmm. That kind of thing. So you know that, oh, we don't hide things from each other. When somebody gives him money, you know that. He, but I've seen my mom sometimes. Now my mom can tilt towards the, a little bit extravagance, where she would just buy bag and then she would hide it in my room. And I'm like, why are you hiding this? Because I don't want your father to know that I bought bag. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so I'm like, wait. But you carry this wow. bag to church. He will eventually you find out. Yeah. So what are you going to see? Why? So she's like, and that she hasn't thought about it yet. That she will still open up to him. Oh, but she has to come oh, up no. with someone. Now she cannot <laughs> tell him. And probably because he probably just bought her a bag. Maybe, mm. what, last two months, last three months. And now he's like, okay, where is this bag coming from? And... Again, I'm like, but you people say your money is the same. So where did that money, where did that money come from? So there are, there are a lot of things to unpack there because I'm looking at her like, hmm, mm -hmm. you both, they work together. So this is very funny because they work together. Right. Everything is together. It's not like, oh, she, it was before when she had her own business, he had his own business and they finally decided, okay, you know what? Let's join the business together. So now that the business is together, she really cannot buy things without him knowing. But then when she had uh, her own on the side, she could easily say, oh, I bought this, I bought that, that kind of thing. And he would probably just overlook it. Mm -hmm. But my father cannot buy anything. And my mother would not know. My mom, my mom is very inquisitive. My dad is also inquisitive. But sometimes he can just like yeah, let it slide. Women will always be women. But at the end of the day, what am I saying is I've seen this growing up and it has kind of like shaped the way I see marriage and when it comes to finances i can't lie to my husband about money mm -hmm. you i should be very open you should know how much i earn you should know how much i'm bringing in you know how much i'm saving and that's why sometimes there are also these questions where or these debates okay should you as a couple have a joint account yeah. where yeah and for me i believe it is important to have joint accounts but I will still have my own personal account because I'm one person. I'm always going to invest. I'm always going to save. I'm always going to have money to my name. Mm -hmm. And I also expect you to have your own on mm -hmm. the side. But when it comes to catering for what we have as a family in terms of rent, in terms of um, the children's school fees, um, taking care of the household and different things, then that money is together. So it's like joint. Mm -hmm. But I'll have my own money. If I decide, you know what, I think I've invested enough. I want to use this money to buy land. I want to use this money to buy a house in my name. I should be allowed to do that. I don't even necessarily have to like say, oh, I want... It's just to let you know as my partner that, oh, this is what I want to do. Yeah. And just bring you along. Yeah. At the same time, I can't even just go ahead to buy a house without talking to my partner. And I don't expect my partner to go and buy a house or a land without, without letting me know. It, it is like we have to come together as a couple and that's why you're a partner. That's why you're a couple. We're supposed to come together to make those decisions as one. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, Jennifer is saying these things from the book. All right, Angie. <laughs> Angie, let's hear from you. Well, I, Jennifer <laughs> has said most of it. Mm. Um, all, obviously, from this story, we can already see that there was a trust issue. Um, we haven't gone deep into the story. Yeah. We're just yeah. saying yeah. how we feel about <laughs> <laughs> this thing. So, yes, I, I buy into the whole idea of having a joint account for the family, yeah. as a family, and having individual accounts because I'm a very individual person. So I would love to also have that you know, personal space where but I don't have to lie to my partner about how much I'm making yeah. or what is in the account. Or do you understand? There, there has to be some level of access because you're now one. So I think most of these things boil down to the level of trust and understanding that they had from the very beginning. Now, if you don't trust yourselves from the very beginning, there's no way. Mm -hmm. You can even trust that. Even that account, you, you now find people... Because I've had friends. I have friends who are married. And... I've seen a lot of them. I have a friend who has kids. Mm -hmm. And just like um, uh, uh, Jennifer said, she buys bags and buys stuff, designer stuff. And she's going to hide it in the kids' room. <laughs> <laughs> and she's going to hide it in the kids' room. And you're like, why are you acting like a thief in your own house? <laughs> and then she's like, oh, that she doesn't want her husband to question her or to ask her 
you know, where she got the money from or what is it. So people have a lot of dodgy for different reasons. Mm, and, yeah. you know, with the new um, way marriages go now, a lot of things have gone wrong. There's a lot of lack of trust, a lot of lack of transparency. Mm. And all these things are the things that poke holes in the marriage and cause you to come up with an end result like this. Because really, I've never heard of a story like this. Each time I hear of marriages nowadays, I hear new, new things, like brand new things. I know a lot of people, I see a lot of the comments that have gone on. A lot of people are in praise, yeah. you know, like, oh, you've brought out the new. Mm. But guess what? what that, this just shows how deeply rooted the damage yeah. within the family mm -hmm. and marriage system has gone mm -hmm. and has eaten. Mm -hmm. A lot of people that would have this kind of com uh, comments are single. A lot of them are also married, married because they've experienced, like Jennifer said, gone through different experiences even within their marriage. But guess what? Every marriage is not the same. Of course. Because you lacked trust or you had a misunderstanding or you did not even get, you were not um, transparent with your partner mm -hmm. or your husband or where, as at then, and then it caused certain issues in your marriage, does not translate that everybody's marriage has to go the mm -hmm. same way. I believe trust is a major criteria in any marriage. And if you cannot be open with something as money, because money is the root of all evil, and money is the major <laughs> issue why a lot of things go wrong. Yeah. Uh, so if you cannot even trust each other and be transparent, that means your marriage might just as well be a sham. Mm. That's just it. Because we have to be honest with ourselves. I understand the story. And really, he, brought, he threw a lot of light. Because if I was a guy, I would probably say, wow. Now, that's another way to go about mm, it. But guess one. what? It also shows a lot of things. Because there's the side where there's a part he played and there's a part she played. Yeah. They both played a part in getting... Because why would you get married to someone and not be open? Mm. That's one. If you have an issue like this, sign a prenup. There's so many other Thank ways you. to go. You know, that... But I'll allow us to get into the... <laughs> into the full okay, story. So I've looked at this story from different angles, right? Now I was saying to you, Angie, I said, this guy started making money when he was 17. Yeah. He was really young. So if at that time, his mom was a custodian of his I wealth, so to speak, yeah. understandable. Assets, understandable. But then for you to have decided to get married to someone, I mean, what then is marriage? If you are not now ready to, you know, let it all. So does it mean that he had already anticipated that they were going to get to a point of divorce? Hmm. And he didn't want to take any chances, and he's like, you know what? Let all this money remain with her. Is that what he thought? On the girl's part as well, did she think? I, I mean, from the full story, you know, he, there are rape allegations against him and cheating and whatnot. So I want to believe that she asked for that because she was frustrated. Mm, yeah, right. It was out of frustration. So it's not as if she woke up one morning um, and said, "I'm not just, doing it." Yeah, again. and said, "I won't take your money." Things happened that got her to that point. And we know how these guys, these footballers, I'm sorry, but then we know how they can be. They live a very extravagant lifestyle and then they have a lot of women at their beck and call and there's all of that going on. So maybe she probably probably couldn't deal with all of that. And that's why she got to the point of filing for a divorce. So I don't think she filed for a divorce because she wanted, she wanted to, to get the money. It's also possible. Money. I mean, it's also possible. It's also very possible. <laughs> you marry a model, what are you expecting? Yeah. Most footballers who marry model, most of the footballers marry models at the end of the day. And the thing about it, just like I was telling you, he, when he married her, he probably, okay, he was just making money, but nobody knew who he was mm. like that. As opposed to marrying a model or dating a model. Most of them go after models. Why? What do you think models, like, what, what do you think is the lifestyle of a model, mm. if not constant provision and luxury? That's what they're used to. Yeah. Yeah. The models we know, you, from, you know, from showroom, you're going to a hotel, from there, you're yeah. going to dinner, you're going yeah. to drink, you're going to this, you're going to socialize. What were you expecting? So you got married to someone like that, and you did not dig deep into your relationship to root it properly before you got married. Then you got married to a model, you think she would spend the rest of her <laughs> life with you and not want to go away with something to continue her life? That's what, that's what you get. So that's why I said from the very beginning that it's a two-way street. Yeah. He had his part to play because he was also leveraging on her and where she was coming from and who she was. Very and true. And everybody is For him not to trust her from the very beginning, he knew what he was into. 
he knew what he was into. We can't, do you understand? So it wasn't even love in the first place. So the two of them were in for the deal. And the deal didn't work out for one person, unfortunately, because one person was smarter than the other. Is that, is that really being smart? Well, um, I mean, we, we, we've seen situations. Yeah. Where, I mean, we've seen situations where I, I can't remember the celebrity who her dad was also in charge of her finances, and then she came out and she, she started crying. Britney Spears. Yeah, that her dad is not giving her access to these mm. things. So these things can go anyway. So right now, a lot of people are saying, "Oh, he's being smart and all of that," and that's because we've heard. Yes. So many stories of where there is divorce and mm. the woman gets like maybe 50 or 40 percent of his assets. Yeah. And so I will, I, I kind of understand why people would be so excited that it feels like he has smarted, he has smarted her. But in another, in another angle, it could have gone wrong mm. for him. His mom can come up one day and say, you know what, this entire money, I want to use it. <laughs> Our parents have been yeah. outsmarting us. Someone said so it, on it, social it, media, mm -hmm. because you don't have a Nigerian mom. That's, that's exactly. you, because yeah. any, anything, anything could have happened. Yeah. And this man is, he's not a saint. So because he was being accused of rape. <laughs> now that's one. Secondly, there are so many layers to this particular story you how did it get to that point where you were being accused of rape is either you were in the process of cheating or you had cheated mm. and that's why it got to that point and personally if i was her or the wife and my husband gets accused of rape there's no way i want to support you do you understand yeah i would rather keep mute and watch it play out and see what happens but you you've been accused of a crime now, if the court rules against it and says, okay, we've done all our investigation, he didn't rape this person, there's no evidence and stuff like that, and that's where it dies. But did you cheat, though? That's another thing. So there are lots of things to unpack here. And, yeah, it's also possible that she decided to see this as an avenue to make extra cash for herself. And this also brings me to another question, like, People who are getting married these days, what are the conversations that you yeah, have? Then. Do you understand? Mm. I dated someone who <coughs> was not comfortable with having conversations around money. And I'm comfortable talking about money. You see me and money. Please, it's let's discuss it. You ask me how much I'm earning, I will tell you. How much is this? Is this? I will tell you. What are you saying? What's your investment like? I will let you know and mm -hmm. break it down. Okay, what do you spend in a month? Like, this is what I spend. This is how much I have for me. So, so I can, I, I'm just like my mother. We did shop. <laughs> me, I like shopping. Do you understand? So, it's like, okay, I have this particular money that I allocate monthly. And this is what I spend my money on. These are the things that I like. So, you know. So, if you're not comfortable, because I remember I was doing a business. I started a business then. And um, I think he bought something for his sibling. I'm just like, business is business. Mm, yeah. Guy, you have to pay me. Mm -hmm. And he was very uncomfortable with the fact that I was trying to remind him. And I don't want to remind you. For me, it, I, I'd rather not remind you. I want you to do it on your own. But he got very uncomfortable mm. around that particular topic. And sometimes when he when I ask for a loan and he loans me money, I say I will pay you back next Sorry, two weeks. So. That next two weeks, I will pay him back. Take your money. So that you know that you can trust me with your money and I can also trust you with money. If we eventually get married, we know that there is trust when it comes to our finances. Nobody's lying about anything or hiding anything. But yeah, he wasn't that type of person. But yeah. This is the craziest divorce of all time and people can't decide who to support in this case. Back in 1994, Gabriel met Christina at a party and they really hit it off. They ended up getting married even though she was 30 years younger than him. They were happily married for 20 years but then Christina decided that she wanted to get a divorce. But when she went to her lawyer, she was shocked to hear that she was already divorced from Gabriel 20 years ago. And this is because 4 months after their marriage, the couple went to the Dominican Republic for a vacation. And Gabriel divorced her there because that's the only country where one party can file for a divorce without informing the other party. And he says he did this because he knew one day Christina would divorce him and try to take all his money. Like this episode is the episode of Mewa and Shelley. <laughs> <laughs> crazy things truly be happening. I mean, look at this. First of all, you see, this, these are the issues. <laughs> why, why, now, that's what, why, why even my, no, but Mary, please, why did she marry him now when you know that you are 30 years younger? than him she why did he marry her father why did he marry her why did he marry each other 
he obviously proposed something to her. Exactly. She so could have said no. To his promises. It depends so on his proposition, people. darling. Wow, look at trying, that. Why is he trying to divorce her without? Because he knew that know. one day she would wake up knowing that so she was young her, okay, and I'll he was going to, to die divorced. soon. Why marry in the first place? Yeah, God. Yeah. Why, why marry? Why not just? This is the know. right reason. He married so that he'll have a wife for he wanted a young for girl. as long as possible. Yeah. Because guess what? This was premeditated. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because four months after your wedding, four months. It wasn't very so deceptive. For, for they were married for thirty years. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. 20, Twenty. Twenty. Twenty years. And it no, but this happened like thirty years later. She's no, 30. she's thirty years younger. She's thirty than years, years younger. younger. Yeah. So. Meaning that for nine, 19, <laughs> 19 years and, and six months, months. And, oh, no, eight months. and eight months, they were not married. Yeah, they were, part she they were partners, and she didn't know. Do no, you know that's how the, that's, the, that's the annoying part? Do you know how bad that yeah. is? Yes, that's so he evil. Was just getting, he was just getting I marriage see. privileges uh -huh. and without, without being married. Being married. This is, this and she thought that she was married, and it took her 20 years. To realize, okay, I don't want to be married to this guy any longer. For whatever reason. But it means that she was loyal for that, those 20 years. She was mm -hmm. with him for those 20 years. What a loyal, but she was with him for those 20 years. Knowing after 20 years that, okay, it's, do you know what? I've given this, she came to a point. I've given this 19 years of my life. Mm -hmm. 19 plus years of my life. I'm tired. I want to go do something. Or I want to get... I want to get married to someone else. Or this guy is frustrating me or we're having issues within the marriage. So I want out. Only to find out you were out 19 years ago. <laughs> you were out Without 19 years ago. So people should That's just wild. start signing prenups. I don't know why people yeah, are so against yeah. prenups. Yeah, prenups prenup, prenup should actually be, should become a norm yeah. now. I think that's just that, that way your money is secure. Way, you can live your you life know normally. You exists that mm -hmm. is at stake if you guys eventually decide to go your separate ways, right? Let's you be married and your chest will be beating, your heart will be beating very fast every day. <laughs> because that, and that's and that's why you have uh, mothers that are very secretive with their mm. lands. Because we, you sort of, you've seen this thing play out a lot of times. So you're just like, oh, more. Let me know myself. Oh, yes, I'm um, going to be transferring to, to an expense. No, it's, it's not the way to go. So you, what? See, full transparency? For you, for you guys, no, for you to even... I don't know why people have watered down marriage so bad now that... It's now as if we're just getting married so that we say that we're husband and wife. That's what Because is. why is somebody your husband or your wife? And then you go ahead to divorce the person with the premeditation that the person might divorce you 20 years later. That is... That's unspeakable. You're not even happy no. being. You're That's not happy being very very No, there's this. There's this um, story, Jennifer. We're talking about it, the one from the I said what I said podcast, where. <laughs> so this lady, right, young lady, she had just gotten married to this guy, and so I don't know what it was. I think her father had some sort of investments that he was supposed to pay out to her at a certain age. So she clocked that age, and then the father paid out the money. I can't remember the exact figure, but I think it was something about maybe ten million naira or something like that. It was way more than it was that. Maybe, I think it was about yeah. thirty million. It yeah. was a lot, a lot, of, a lot money, of money actually, a lot of money. And then her her <laughs> her husband, um, what's the call now? Came and said, "Oh, look, we don't have money to pay rent, right? So, baby." What do we do? And she acted like she didn't know any. She didn't have any that money. She didn't even the case. So what happened was she tagged it as a gift from so her, her dad, mm. and um, I think they had an apartment where they were living in. But the guy wanted to move Somewhere into else. a new apartment. So what happened was the apartment he saw that was very nice wasn't up to was way more than his budget. Mm. But because he didn't have up to that amount, he decided to go for another apartment. So now she was telling us, oh, she actually has the money, but she didn't tell her husband that she actually has the money. this <laughs> amount of money, which yeah. is a huge mm. sum of money. Because if you have that, just imagine having like 30 million naira. And let's say the apartment will probably cost them, um, let's say... 25? Eight. He wasn't buying, no, he, was he was renting. renting. Oh, okay. So let's say 8 million mm. per annum. And his budget was actually what seven million, and she said, "Oh, that she couldn't contribute to it because she hadn't told him that she had that amount of money." I don't know if she eventually mentioned. I don't it. remember I think how she he mentioned found it to him or something, like that. Or something yeah. like that. Yeah, and he was very shocked, like, "Oh, 
So you have this amount of money and we were looking, we were for, looking for an apartment. We got this apartment that we both loved, but we had to go for this second option because of that. And she's like, yeah, but uh, she didn't think. So. <laughs> so she's like, she didn't think she needed to contribute or give him out of her money. Okay, please. Uh, if you do, if you're just tuned in to Ladies Night Out and we're discussing the Hakimi's divorce saga and speaking to financial transparency in marriage, please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to zero eight one eight zero three eight four six six three. You could also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa One with the hashtag Wayshow. Our phone line is now open. Please call us on zero seven zero two five zero zero seven seven four nine. Okay, so we're talking about the. <laughs> mm. Okay, so you hear you hear strange stories every other day. To be honest, it's crazy so and it's scary. For me, I feel. I don't. I don't know the full story mm. or the full circumstance that led to this. Um, I think first of all, I think it was wrong for her not to have said anything at that time, because it still goes b back to what I said: is a trust issue. So I don't see if, if the two of you have like a joint account mm -hmm. and maybe the money in the account was not enough and you have your private account, there is no big deal in saying, darling, I can, I can help you out with that. You don't even necessarily have to tell him. I think the eyebrow was raised when <laughs> you did have the money yeah. during that same time and you did nothing. So it speaks to a whole lot of things, not just trust. Mm -hmm. Even the love, you question it because... It's like seeing someone dying love, yeah. Yeah. or hungry right in front of you. You have like two plates of food. Mm -hmm. Do you want to drown in but the she food? she might have had her, her reasons. What reasons? Maybe. She, she said like, she didn't see the need. See, it boils down to the same thing. Reason. She didn't have any If, you, if you don't see the need, reason. it already speaks to avoiding your relationship. Look, is a house that both of you are going to live in together. Do you understand? And so, tell, me, tell me you borrowed the money. You, if you don't want to declare... Tell me you have plenty from someone. What talking about. How but can it you still get, goes down to trust. How mm -hmm. can you get such money and not declare? Even if you don't declare the full amount of money. money. You don't even no. understand. Hmm. Right no, now, you have to so declare because, now. Right now, how you declare? 5,000 is small money to me. Do you understand? But if I'm in a relationship and my father sends me 5,000, I'm like, ah, my, my father sends me 5,000, oh, and ah, I think I'll just use it for this or this. <laughs> and then that's it. <laughs> It's not that you're going to... So the money is mine. I don't expect my partner to be greedy. Mm -hmm. Now, if greed comes in, then we then, have a problem. Yeah. I don't expect you to be greedy and just think, how, oh, because how do you I have this person money. Is not going to be greedy? And that's what I'm saying now. That Dolly, if, if, greed, if greed comes into play... Yeah, so maybe she knows that. If greed comes into the picture, then I know that I have it. Then, then I know that we have a problem and something we need to sort out. But this woman said that she didn't see anything to it. And she might, she might have. She just, I feel like, I feel like we, we she might have also, she might have also had the opinion that, you know what, the man's the provider of the family, mm. you know, <laughs> so see things yourself, and fine, except is he was ex having an issue at that Which time. Issue? He couldn't come up with the money. It was above his budget, and he needed help. And so they found somewhere within. What the happened budget? to supporting your other half in marriage? I mean, it's not boyfriend and girlfriend. It's okay. Marriage. I, I, I think um, <gasps> we, I also had people, I saw people who actually came from this angle. Mm -hmm. Now, him being the sole provider, yeah. that's fine. And you're probably not already used to mm -hmm. supporting him in anything. You let him do everything. everything. Yeah, that's fine as well. If that's if that's the dynamic, that might, yeah, if that's that the might dynamics have been the dynamic of the relationship, might. that's fine. That's understandable. I think mine is the fact that you got something mm. i think it is worth sharing because as partners i feel like you're supposed to share everything but is everything the, is the man we sharing share oh why not you're making that's what we're saying. Saying. You're, you're making we don't know based he's, on yeah now what the angle i'm coming from is based on what the babe has said mm -hmm. yeah. the story she has given so i am going to judge it based on what she has given. i'm not going to assume that oh she's being greedy he was being greedy she never tagged herself as greedy she said she was very that everything she did was from an innocent, innocent place that she didn't know honestly that she was doing anything wrong and that's fine and for you not to know that there is actually a gap <laughs> in your marriage that is something to actually discuss about you don't necessarily have to fight so wait are you saying are you saying now that if you get married 
Your money is his money. His money is your money. My money is not his money. His money is not but my we money. Just had, you but know, we, we, we said that at the beginning of the thing. conversation yeah. that we'll have a yeah. joint and then people still have their individual yeah. lives. For example, if you want, you're going out with your, your girls for drinks for Christ's sake. Mm. Wait, sometimes my husband, I'll, they'll I'll, pay for I'll it. Do you understand? So you would use your money now. If it if he sends you money, if he sends you money, it's fine. Yeah. If he says, "Baby, okay, take the card of the joint account and take money from there," uh, uh, that's so okay yeah. too. Me having my own individual money doesn't stop me from asking. Oh, my husband, oh, please, please of course, you, yes, baby. please. You go and take my husband me. says, "Oh, I'm going to buy you. I, I need new wig. Oh you buy a new wig, oh, but I need to go shopping." Oh and he says, "Okay, how much is it?" If I tell you, oh, the clothes I'm buying is 300k, and he said, I can only afford 200. Eh, no, well, I bring Just bring it. Well, bring what if he, he comes to you, you know, oh, uh, they I will give Why you. Why can't you give your husband I money? You. I will give you. Please, but I mean, I grew up from in Nigeria, I'm telling you. I think the man as a sole provider. So, wait, 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 even that mentality has changed. Him being the sole provider or means that you cannot help. I can yeah. help, I can support. I'm just saying that. Yeah. It's not as if he was in dire need. He it's was. Sure. How is it a dire need? You Does have it a have budget. to be? You have it's a safe. budget. And the house you want is above your budget. Bear in mind that he loves the house as well. Darling, let's look for what is within your budget. Okay. No, that one is totally fine. That's okay. your one I support. The I fact that we're having this conversation already shows that there's a problem in the marriage. What's Why the would your husband... I'm not talking about your boyfriend. <laughs> your boyfriend, I'll tell you, deal with your own problem and deal with mine. No, of afterwards. course. But <laughs> it's your husband. There's a different, you've made a different commitment at that point. So I don't see any, the fact that you don't see anything in it, in helping out mm. when you can afford to help, is a, a big, big issue. Maybe you should use money for something else. Mary, um, yes, you know, I don't think so. You're working, you're working with assumptions here. You know what? Now yeah. let's talk. Let's talk about declaring debts. Yeah, right. Because a lot of people actually go into marriages. I know a story of a couple that are no longer together now, sadly. Wow. And the greatest issue they had in their marriage was money. And the person said he would literally wake up on some days to a text message from his friend's younger sister saying his wife had bought hair of XYZ amount from her and she's been owing for a while and she's been trying to reach her, she can't reach her, please help me talk to her. There was also a story of how um, one day he was having his afternoon nap on the weekend and then somebody hoots at their gates and there's some guy that pulls up and says, your wife is owing money, blah, blah, blah. Oh, the one that even killed me was they were having lunch at a co-hotel buffet on a Sunday after church. And while they were sitting, somebody walks up to their table and says, you idiots. And he's like, hey, that's my wife you're talking about. Your wife? She has not told you? Damn. So imagine a situation. Like, so let's, let's, briefly, let's discuss. So, but if he has now, he should support. That's bad financial See, that she has. See, it's, it's very terrible. It's terrible. But if he can accommodate it, he should support. No, right? there's, for him to complain, he's obviously not accommodating yeah, it. And it had been happening. <laughs> it's not working for him. It had been happening. It, working it wasn't him. once, it wasn't twice. It was recurrent. So what I see is that she has an issue. And he tried to help her. So now let's, she okay, maybe issue. I shouldn't even give out for the story, right? Issue. Guess what? He sat with her and he's like, See, I've had enough of this. Can you please tell me everybody yeah, that you're owing money? And he drew it. He created an Excel sheet. And okay, in total, we're owing 7 million naira, Abby. Oh, yeah. This is how we're going to do it. In 10 months, we're going to pay off this debt. So month one, we're paying 700k. Which one is the most pressing one? Which one is the one that is hooking you here? That if they see you outside now, they can't beat you. <laughs> Let's start from that one. I felt like that was a very con that's yeah. he's an amazing human yeah, being for doing that. Wow. Right? That's amazing. So that's that's where we talk about support. Okay. That's where okay. the support comes yeah, so in. Yeah, so he so he was he was being supported. So imagine that kind of situation. See, we're all human beings, you will be tired. You finish doing that thing, and then you now realize that there's even still more outside what all that is okay. that she has declared yeah. to oh you. Yeah. Come on. I mean, aside the fact that she has bad financial habits or culture, there's also the fact that she She's a liar mm. because she wasn't being transparent and she didn't tell him. So he had to find out from outsiders. I remember when a guy was asking me out one time and during the period of trying to know him, I realized that this person is bad with money. <laughs> and I told myself, never, I can never in this life be with somebody who is bad with money. 
it is going to be a problem. Is we are now we are going to fight. So there is no need carrying on because there there are little things, and I feel like people don't pay attention to these things. There are sometimes that people give off. What is so yeah, about it? You should not so even be you, 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 you married. That's why you do marriage counseling and all those things. You know, but I, I, you know, I don't understand the reason why people act like that. <laughs> why do you purchase things that you cannot pay for? I, I think that people should cut Clout. their their coats according to their mm -hmm. size. It's it's quite it's quite upsetting for you to have that kind of relationship. I don't even even as an individual, I hate own. I hate owing because I hate people that's calling you, me. Yeah. Some people that's me. So that's the thing. So it will reflect on my marriage when I do get married because it's, do you understand? Yeah. You, I, hate, I can't sleep when I'm owing someone. Like if you tell me now, I can just because even if I forget, if you tell me immediately, I just, because I don't want that thing, that situation to happen a second yeah. time. Yeah. I hate people having to, to yeah, for it to look like I'm running away from payment or something. I can tell you to hold on, but I just believe that honesty is very, very important, even in marriage. Mm. So to have someone that has this kind of character already poses a problem to the marriage and to them as individuals. Because I can imagine how embarrassing it is for you to always step outside and someone just comes to, even when you're standing with a friend, it's embarrassing. Someone walks up to you and starts embarrassing you. On, and then sometimes you find out how much it is, maybe 20,000, <laughs> maybe like, and you're like, see, instead of you to embarrass my friend, take this money, <laughs> I will pay. Because I don't know why anyone will want to see themselves in that kind of situation mm. where you are being embarrassed everywhere you go because you cannot manage your finances or your financial purchases. If you're broke, don't buy. Mm. Anyway, so now I find out from my end. See, if you have any trauma that you are dealing with from before, heal before you marry. Yeah. yeah. That is very important. Please don't bring... See, we're human beings. Everybody has their individual baggages and whatnot. But if you are saying that, oh, because I saw my mother, because I saw my father do one thing, one thing when they were married, and you have to heal from that before you come and say you want to marry me because you cannot bring that mentality into marriage with yeah, me, so it please. Take I can't really heal that. from that. You can. Find no, out you can make ladies. decisions. You can make yeah. decisions. Yeah, for so, uh, yeah, but it's like the healing is, is a process. It's a process. That's why you have to be open to the person. See, it's even as serious as you tell the person, look, this is what my parents faced when they get married. This is where I'm coming from. And I don't want that to happen to us. If he truly loves you, or if she truly loves you, she will do her best to walk towards and make sure that you know you it doesn't repeat itself in your your marriage. I mean, that's my two cents. Obviously, you can see that her husband was a better manager because he helped her to manage yeah. it when she come, uh, you know, came to him with that issue. But mm. thereby, it was uh, an issue that was, you know, reoccurring. <laughs> I think for me, um, my last words would be, yeah. it is important that you have conversations about money. Money is very, very important, important because... Your money, your your marriage is going to thrive on money. Mm. Money is used hmm. for everything in your entire life, yes, even so. as a single person. So mm -hmm. talk about money. What your roles are. Who is contributing for what in the family. Um, learn about the person's saving culture, the person's financial habits, and all of that. Very very key. Mm. Thank you, Jennifer. Any trust is very very important. Trust, you have yeah. to have those conversations mm -hmm. and trust each other. If not, don't bother. Okay, I think we've hit the nail on the head already. <laughs> Amazing conversation, ladies. Thank you very much. Before we go, do ensure you follow us on Instagram at Way Show Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and most importantly, follow all our social media engagements. And remember to like, share, comment, and invite your friends and family to watch us and follow us. If you missed today's quotes, here it is again. The handling of finances is one of the major emotional battlegrounds of any marriage. The root problem seems to be an unrealistic and immature view of money and this is by david augsburger see you tomorrow at 8 p.m as we bring another great conversation to your screen bye, bye.